Hey guys, today we're going to be going over PGP again. I wrote a tutorial just yesterday on verifying PGP signatures. This is an essential topic. We're also going to talk briefly about sending encrypted messages to other people and importing, exporting, and even backing up our keys. So stay tuned for this. Make sure to share this video, like it, and subscribe. Helping repost links to this video helps move this channel and videos up higher in the rankings for the algorithm. So please do repost this in Telegram, on websites, and anywhere else people might be interested. First thing, the tutorial I wrote yesterday, if you go through this, I talk about the reasons you want to verify signatures and the various types of places that an attacker could be where they can replace an image download, they can attack a website and replace the actual link to malware. So there's various reasons you're going to want to pay attention to this tutorial if you're not already familiar. Let's open up GPA, which is GNU Privacy Assistant on Pop! OS. Uh, it will be in the accessories folder in the drop down menu and you'll just click on that and it'll open it up. If you don't have GP GNU Privacy Assistant installed yet for Debian systems do apt install GPA for Manjaro or Arch systems you're just going to do Pacman then capital S flag and GPA and you'll have it installed and once you've opened that we're gonna see this window here we're gonna open our key ring manager and to write a message to someone else first thing you're gonna want to do is get their public key and to import that key what you'll do is you'll simply go down to the keys button right here go down to import keys and at that point you'll be able to import a key so using this example here I just imported my own key but you can import the person's key that you want to have communications with only share your public key keep the private key always private never share that and when you want to share your public key click on your key here then go to keys then go to export keys and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna name the key so for me I do RTP key and I would simply save it in a location that I know where it is and I will then hit save then it'll be saved to that location then simply attach that public key to an email and it's as easy as that you can then get their public key go to the keys and import just as I showed you with my own key and when you want to write a message to that individual after you've already imported their key and you've created your own key if you haven't created a key yet you can simply go down to new key it'll allow you to select a variety of choices you can increase the key size for more protection uh, of course go with RSA and then you can fill out your name if you want your nickname instead or an email and a comment on the key then now that we have the person's key we want to communicate with we've created our key we imported our friends key that we want to talk to the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write a message to them we'll simply go down to Windows clipboard then we'll say hey this is a secret message hope you get this I would simply go to encrypt the buffer text go to the individual I want to send the message to you're gonna that's really important make sure you select their public key to write the message to them and that way only they can read it with their own key then you can hit sign and of course if you have multiple keys select the one you want to use which is the key of the public key that you already exported and shared with the person that you're talking to here so you select the key you're going to encrypt with which is the public key that you already shared with them so if, it, if you have multiple keys you're going to want to select the one they have so they can read the message and to send the message to this individual you will click on their public key then hit OK and at this point you're going to hit yes you want to use this key 
and you have your encrypted message. And at this point, all you have to do is copy and paste this into an email or otherwise, and that will essentially give you an encrypted message that you can send in anything. And that's the beauty in PGP with all the problems with the attacks on end-to-end -end encrypted messengers and social media. It's very important to understand how to send encrypted messages using PGP. Because when all else fails, when encrypted end-to-end -end messengers end up getting a backdoor or have unknown security vulnerabilities, you can always rely on PGP. PGP is something that I recommend everyone learn how to use and hopefully this guide is getting you started there. So now you know how to write an encrypted message to someone. I've tried to go over it a couple times, make it thorough. And when you receive a message from someone, you'll simply paste it into the clipboard here and then you will hit decrypt right here. And at that point, it's going to ask for your personal key, your own personal key password. You will type that in and it'll automatically show you in clear text the message that person wrote to you using your public key. And that's how you decrypt and encrypt a message to someone. Next, what we're going to cover is we're going to actually verify an image signature. This is a vital topic because if you can't trust the Linux distribution that you've installed on your computer, nothing else on that computer can be trusted thereafter. So it's basically the most important thing you can do. We're also talking a little bit about fingerprints and when you import someone else's key including what we just went over, how to encrypt, decrypt messages, you're going to want to check the fingerprint here and I cover all of this in this guide here but I'll briefly uh, link this guide and I'll also briefly go over it right here I talk about how to check and verify fingerprints using multiple different methods in the guide so be sure to check that out I put in plenty of screenshots including how to find the key how to verify the fingerprint in fact we go down here we see the fingerprint when you click on the key that you imported and then what you're going to want to do is cross-reference that across multiple different uh, sources or you can use the key server search which built in to GPA uh, right here I cut part of the website that has the correct fingerprint here you have to make sure these match because if they don't match that means someone could be messing with and trying to send you the wrong key when you're using an end-to-end -end encrypted messenger for example if the fingerprint changes that means you could be in the middle of a man in the middle attack and that is a huge danger in these automated end-to-end -end encrypted messenger programs and if you're on an XMPP server and you don't know the administrator and don't trust them they could try to pull these kind of maneuvers on you end-to-end -end encrypted messengers aren't always what they're cracked up to be and learning to use PGP is going to get you much further if you have an essential communication with someone and you can't take any chances what are you going to use? You're going to use PGP. You're not going to use an automated encrypted messenger. Of course, they're convenient, but are they compartmentalized away from the encryption process? No, but PGP is. PGP can be done on an offline-only machine and then transferred over to a online machine. So you can do it on an air gap. You can perform the encryption decryption on an air gap machine, compartmentalizing away from your messaging, your transport of messages back and forth and that adds another layer of security and privacy for you we're going to look really quick at opening a signature for instance tails we're going to use in this instance uh, my guide goes over another image verification so you have two examples here to work with we're going to download the tails image once you've downloaded that image, saved that image, then what you're going to want to do is download the signature. You want to download the actual signing key and the signature. Once you've done that in this program, GNU Privacy Assistant, you'll go over here, open the file manager. Then what you're going to do, you're going to open that signature. So we're going over to our downloads folder in this instance and I have already downloaded tails as you can see right here the image I've already imported the key 
right here, you can see the Tails developers. And what I've done after I did that is I actually right click on it and then I signed the Tails developers key after I matched their fingerprints. So all of this is made much more clear in the guide. So if you're having any questions, leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer it. But I do suggest taking a look at the written guide at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts. That's a public guide for everyone to use. I've tried to make it really clear and easy to understand. So once you get the image, the key imported and signed and the signature downloaded. You're going to open the .sig, the signature file. We're going to open that. Then all we have to do at this point is we go over to here and then we check the signatures of the selected file. At that point it's going to check the signature and the image file it's associated with. It's going to verify and validate that that signature and that image is valid. As you can see right here status is valid. It's because I imported the Tails developer keys, I checked the fingerprints, and then I signed the Tails developer keys. At that point, I trusted the Tails developer keys with authenticating and validating anything that is signed by those keys. So that's how you do it. That's how you use PGP. That's how you validate an image. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please do share this video. I need your help getting these videos out. Uh, it is difficult when you provide real privacy and anonymity topics for people. It is an uphill battle for the algorithm. They do not promote that kind of stuff for the most part. Make sure to share the video, like the video, and subscribe. And I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy and security.